Hey everyone, this is Mel from Cardstock Concoctions. Welcome back today to a card making tutorial. Um, this design was originally done by Rebecca De Propos. Look at the top of the screen and in the description box below for her name. I found this on Pinterest and the reason I found this on Pinterest is I actually have the Cups and Kettles, I believe it's called Cups and Kettles. Uh, yeah, Cups and Kettles Frameless Dies from Stampin' Up! from a few years ago. And I realized that I really liked this stamp set, however, um, sorry, the dies, but I haven't really used them a whole lot. And I actually designed an entire card class around these dies. And I saw this card that she made and I was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. However, it was a little too advanced to do that card in the card class. However, I thought I would try to recreate a version of it. There were no directions or anything like that associated with it, and she used a slightly different stamp set and die set for this card than I did. Um, but this is the simplified version of that card, which is really beautiful. So I'm gonna give you guys the dimensions to make this particular card, as well as the card we're making today is this but amped up about five notches. That's gonna be great. So let's go ahead and get started. This card is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. The one we're making today is a five by seven inch card, just to let everybody know. But again, these are four and a quarter by five. The one we're making today is five by seven, just to give us a little more room to play. If anybody would like the names of anything that I'm using, it will be in the description box below along with all of the dimensions, both for this card as well as for the other card. So I'm gonna put both papers down there as well. Okay, set this off to the side. The first thing you are going to need is a piece of cardstock that is cut to 10 inches by seven inches, squared down the middle at five inches, this is actually a pre-made base that I wound up finding in my stash. And it's in Whisper White, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go with it. Fold it in half, and grab your bone folder if you guys like bone folders. If you're not, just use your fingers. And go ahead and run that down the middle. This is your card stock base. Beautiful, all right, for the moment, set that aside. The next piece of cardstock that you're really going to need, you're gonna need two others here. This, I did all of mine, just to let everybody know, there are a couple of color options. So this one here is actually out of Tip Top Taupe, and it was a Stampin' Up! in color like three years ago? I have no idea, four years ago, probably not quite that long, maybe two years ago. And uh, I absolutely love the color, so I bought extra of it. I have no idea if it's actually one of their colors anymore. Um, unfortunately, I have not taken the opportunity to look recently, so there we go. But I'm doing mine on a tip top tote. You can do yours out of Sahara Sand, Sierra Sand, um, Crumb Cake, any neutral color, ivories, very vanillas, that kind of stuff. Anything that's like a khaki colored or something like that that you like. Um, part of what makes this thing so beautiful is that it's all kind of monotoned. All right, setting that aside again, I'm sorry. So I'm using Tip Top Taupe. It is a retired in color to my knowledge. I have no idea if they brought it back. Um, but besides that fact, this is a piece of Tip Top Taupe that measures, okay, this measures four and seven eighths, <laughs> four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And you will be losing a little bit more of your space on here by the time we get done. So you wanna make it a little bit bigger than four and three quarters by six and three quarters like I would normally have you do. Just a little bit bigger than that. You don't have to go the full four and seven eighths. This here is actually four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And it is another piece of Whisper White. Trust me, things will not be white by the time we get done with them. Thumbs up, everybody. Uh, then you will also be needing a piece of Scrap Whisper White. I have no idea how that got dirty, but that's okay. Um, scrap Whisper White to actually punch out all of your dyes from. And 
Today we will be using whatever sentiment stamps that you would like. I'm using a nice cup of world's best mother because Mother's Day is coming up and that's what I'm going to be using. But if you guys, any sentiment for the inside works for you. I'm also being used timeless textures. I'm actually going to be using this Florida lease here. Any of these other textures would work. Um, if you guys have gorgeous grunge or a few of the others, those also work. These stamps are already mounted up. You don't need to see those in there again. You will also need ooh, one paper doily. Uh, Stampin' Up! sells some. Yes, they do. Um, however, mine come from Prima. And they were 100 doilies in a pack. And don't ask me where I got them because I don't remember. Oh, I know where I got them. I got them from photobella.com during their warehouse sale. Once a year, she has a warehouse sale. And uh, that's where I got those. And I picked up a couple of others, too. I think I've got them in gold. Maybe silver. Don't quote me on that. But but they're really great. They're awesome. Okay, that's out of the way. Everything else, we're going to go through that as we need it. Just so that, you know... We can kind of keep moving along here. Okay, first things first. We kind of want to grunge up our card just a little bit. Um, so this was from the original pack that she did, and I really liked it. So there's a couple of different techniques to do this. You can either use your edge of your scissors and literally rub them across the edges. And that just kind of roughs up the edges of your paper. I would, if you're doing your cardstock base, do them both at the same time. Leave it folded, you're fine, you don't have to worry about it. Um, the only thing I will say, do not do this edge here. Do not do your folded edge, it weakens your card. And just run it across this. If you have a sanding tool, okay, this is a funny sanding tool, but a sanding tool nonetheless, this also works. Um, there are tools out there that basically look like a little, like a pumice stone almost. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen those. I don't actually have one, but there you go. Okay, you are going to rough up the edges of your cardstock base a little bit. Then you're going to really rough up your edges of your tip top tote piece as well as your whisper white piece. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I will be right back. Okay, everyone, so I went ahead and did that. And as you can tell, um, this is just slightly roughed up. And then these here are really roughed up. And if you guys have a little bit of, you know, where your fingers are holding while you're roughing it up or whatever, that's okay. That actually adds a lot of character to your card. So now that that is done, we're actually gonna do all of our stamping, okay, the majority of our stamping next. And if you have a sentiment for the inside of your card, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and stamp that now. I'm gonna move these up. Now I'm going to grab in my Whisper White piece. You guys have some like tail things hanging off, just kinda of scoop them off your paper. And I'm going to grab in my Florida Lease. I'm using Florida Lease. any kind of texture in there would be great. Now I'm going to stamp off once and then stamp two or three times all over my paper here. Stamp off once, just to get a coverage. And I'll be honest with you, you really only need to do the top half, okay? Why? Because the bottom half is going to be covered, everybody. You know what, I'm gonna do it all just to be on the safe side, why not, right? Why not? Better safe than sorry. One more. Boom, boom. Yeah, I like that. If you guys got a little bit of grunge going on, that's okay too, because that's all right. I mean, it's, you're supposed to have a couple of different dimensions and things like that. All right, so. We are gonna set the ink aside for just a few seconds and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut out our teapot and this is actually a little creamer. Um, in the stamp set, or in the die set, and if you guys are using a different teacups and kettle dies or whatever, 
Um, yours might be a slightly different size than mine, and that's okay. So grab however many you need. I already have one cut out already. <laughs> it looks really weird, but let's just say it was from the prototype. But there are two sizes of the cup and one size kettle, and then we had the little creamer. And my original idea for this card was to put the kettle, the creamer, the cup, and the creamer. Well, it was a little too small. So that's why I decided to go up to a five by seven card this time. So cut out all three, cut out just two, cut out however many you want to fit your card, okay? I'm actually just going to cut out these two because I already have the cup already made up. We're gonna set the cup aside. I'm gonna cut these out of our leftover, our scrap whisper white. I'm using the Big Shot today and the magnetic platform. I am cutting some things out of this video because I don't think you guys want it to be a million years long. So I went ahead and I cut these out from the Big Shot. And you can also see here, I have this one cut out. So we have the teapot lid in the teapot. I also have the little creamer. And if I was you, I would also cut out a cup, but I've already cut out my cup, so that's why I didn't do this twice. So using the same Florida Lease stamp, I am going to go ahead and full force this time, give a good old stamp onto this teapot. Nice, good, thick, rich image. And again, I'm gonna do a little more on this creamer. There we go. Now comes the fun part. I love to ink things. Now I'm gonna ink the edges. So I have a little sponge here and my tip top taupe ink. And I'm going to go around the outside of my cardstock base, the inside corner of my cardstock base, my five by seven stamped top piece. And I'm also gonna go around my tip top toe piece as well. And as well as all of these little pieces here. All right, so I will show you how I'm gonna do that. So all you guys do is dab, dab, dab. I push all that stuff out of the way. And I just flick, okay? The more you flick, the deeper the color, the deeper the color, could be good or could be bad. I always say go light in the beginning and you can always add more. All right, so I'm gonna go around the outside here and I will meet you guys back on the next step. All right, so I went ahead and I just finished the outside of my cardstock base. I'm gonna turn it over, fold it in half, and I'm actually going to go around the entire inside quarter. I like to give my insides of my cards a little bit of love too. So just the same as you guys did the outside, go ahead and just flick. If you guys want the deeper, richer color, the more you would put on. You could also stamp a little Florida lease in the corners or just one of the corners. I think I'm just gonna leave it with the inking. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and I will meet you guys at the next one. All right, so I just went ahead and I finished my cardstock base, inking the edges. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm going to do my tip top taupe next. And we're again, this time I wanna get it nice and inky. I want to get it a good, rich color. I wanna get almost to the point where I wanna lay this down and do it this way, okay? I wanna get the edges real good. I wanna get good, rich, deep color in there. You're not gonna see much difference now when you hold it up, but once you guys get all the way around, I mean, it's a very faint color difference, but that's okay. So go all the way around and I'll meet you back. All right. So I just went ahead and I finished up my, around my piece of tip top taupe here. Going to set that aside to dry as well. And I'm going to grab my piece of whisper white. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ink around the edges. Grabbing my sponge, nice deep, rich color. I want to kind of go in a little bit. So I am going to angle my sponge a little more to make sure I get a little more on the paper. A nice, rich color that's just a faint hint. I'm going to go all the way around and I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm at the end here of my Whisper White piece. 
on a little more of that one over there. You guys can see how rich and full I kind of made all that color around there as well. Go ahead and set this one aside. Something I did forget to tell you guys that you are going to want to also ink is your doily. I would go ahead and either fold your doily in half or whatever you're going to do with it. I'm going to fold mine in half and I'm just going to ink the edges. You don't need to do both sides because you're not really going to see one of the sides, but you do want to ink the edges of your doily as well. I believe the original inspiration for this card actually used an actual real live doily that she stained in coffee. Um, I am using a paper doily <laughs> because, well, doilies are, that was just impressive. Let's just say that. Okay, we're also going to ink the edges of all of our die cut pieces. Uh, I did cut out there for a second. My dog was barking, so I do apologize. But go ahead and ink all these pieces as well as best you can because if you're like me and you can't like really get your sponge in there sometimes that's a little hard all around the edges and then also your cup so once that's all done you are done with all your inking you can go ahead oh I do apologize there's actually one more thing you guys are going to want to ink so as part of this card clean off my workspace here just a little bit <laughs> You're gonna need some tissue paper, and I just used regular tissue paper. And this is white tissue, sorry you guys. This is white tissue paper that you're gonna use. And the funniest thing is, is I actually kind of would suggest doing this part in, in two pieces. So go ahead and grab yourself some snail or tape runner or whatever. And I do this off to the side. So next to where you guys have your fold, uh, I went ahead and I ran a little bit of tape on there. And then I carefully started to just kind of pleat, folded this thing in half a little bit, not quite half, um, but you know, left a little bit of a border there. You're not quite that much of a border. <laughs> All right, and this tissue paper was just an eyeball. So I believe my full tissue paper is about four and a half inches by about 10 inches would be my suggestion for you. Um, it worked really well on my smaller card, so I'm going to use it a little bit more on my bigger card. So you're just going to take it and you're just going to, again, fold it about halfway down. And then we're just going to start to pleat it. And I found when I was pleating it that it's a lot easier if I pleat it and I stick it into the tape all at the same time time okay and you don't want to pleat like every inch you want to pleat like every well not every quarter of an inch I'm sorry you want to pleat every inch not every quarter of an inch some decent sized pleats in here you know you kind of get it stuck in there it looks really nice and it flares out real nice this way and then I'm going to stick it down by running another tape runner along the top edge. And just fold your doily over. I'm gonna stick that inside there just a little bit. Fold your doily over and stick it down, okay? Now take your sponge and ink the edge and the pleats, important part. Now you're gonna see, I didn't do a whole lot of inking there, I just did a little bit. It's gonna give a little bit of a grungy color to it. It's gonna be all good. So we're ready to move on to the next step here. There's a couple of ways to do this, and you can either do this next step with a paper piercer and a foam mat, or you can actually run it through your sewing machine. A sewing machine is a lot faster. If you guys have one of these handy dandy little tool finder thingies, I say that's really cool too. That's typically what I use. However, not everybody has them, and that is completely understandable. They are a random purchase, and I actually got mine for free a while ago. All you do is you stick them in the holes here and you go all the way down okay go all the way around your card and once you have all your holes punched or you can do this freehand by the way I just have no ability to do anything freehand so I don't do it freehand uh, so go all the way around your card and I will meet you guys back at the other side Okay, everyone, so now that all my holes have been punched and everything, I went ahead and I pulled out some white twine. 
that I had in sitting in my stash. Mine is from Merchant 41, which comes from Hobby Lobby, which is a local crafting store here in the U.S. Um, for anybody who does not live in the United States, any kind of twine works. So if you guys are working with crumb cake and you guys actually wanted to use like the regular colored twine, I say go for it. Either a regular needle or if you're me, I went ahead and I grabbed the flossing crest flossing tools, I guess, from the dentist. <laughs> um, and that's what I'm going to be using to sew. So again, if you are doing this on the sewing machine, so much faster. All right, everyone. So I'm coming up here to the last couple of stitches. And yes, to anybody who doesn't know, I did actually wind up switching to a metal needle just because it was a heck of a lot faster. All right, so I'm just gonna go back down through my original hole. Okay, again, I did switch to a metal needle as I sewed around the edges. So there we go, I went ahead and I sewed around the edges. So you got your two tails, snip those off. When I tack this down to the front of my card is when I will take care of my tails. So there we go. So that's how we currently look. Now comes for the fun part of putting everything together. So I have my cardstock base here and I have my crumb cake underlay. I'm actually going to clean off my surface just a little bit here. There we go. And you're going to notice one fits on top of the other. Nice and pretty. Just a little bit of extra room. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick this one straight down. Because of the weight of this card, I am using Fast Fuse. Um, and I'm going to use a decent chunk because, again, this card's going to have some weight on it. And I don't want it to go anywhere. So there we go. Um, the key about Fast Fuse, if you stick it down, it never comes back up again. Just to let everybody know. <laughs> um, yeah, so once it's stuck down, it doesn't really come up again, guys. So there we go. We have just a little bit of room all the way around our card. Now, for this one here, I am actually not sticking this down yet. Just so everybody knows. I repeat, I am not sticking this down yet. We're going to add some ribbon first. So a long time ago, Stampin' Up! actually had Tip Top Taupe ribbon that was really nice and beautiful. And so I'm going to actually attach some of that. You'll see in this card here, we have it down a little bit. However, I want to make sure where my placement of everything is going to go. So our doily fits nicely in between our two things. So I'm actually just going to stick that straight down as well. This one, you don't need a whole lot of oomph for because it's very light. So snail is A-OK. -okay. But I just want to know where my placement's going to lie. So again, just kind of stuck that right there, just for placement reasons. Measure out a good bit of tip top taupe here. All right. Now, I'm using approximately four inches, maybe, four and a half inches, um, partially because I want a little bit of it extra to be down underneath here, and I want a little bit to roll over. Um, use any ribbon that you like that fits your project. All right, so I'm just going to take that, stick it in there, stick that down. Guys, if that join's not as pretty as you would like, do not worry. It will not be there for long. Put a little more fast fuse on the other side, stick my other ribbon back there. At this time is the time that you want to go and stick your sides down. Go ahead and stick those in there as well. All right. Now we're at the point where we can put this on the front of our card. If you do not plan on sending this in the mail and you actually plan on handing this to somebody, you can do this next portion. And that is adding a little extra dimension. So I went ahead and I've got these dimensionals here. So these are the teeny tiny ones. These are actually the outside rim of the big ones. Um, but I'm just going to actually go ahead and I'm going to use part of this big thing here. Um, all right. Pulling the backing off here. Setting those aside. Again, I use every portion of my dimensionals I can possibly get my hands on. So that's why you guys are going to see the little holes. Otherwise, they're little circles for this. Dimension adds a lot to a card. It allows it to... Uh, 
It allows it to be seen from a further distance. It adds depth to a card without adding extra layers to a card. Um, but again, if you guys are sending this in the mail, please do not do that. Lining that up, giving just a smidgen, adding some dimensional there. Okay, so now I'm going to figure out the placement of all of my pieces. If you guys want a sentiment up here in that corner, go ahead. Or if you guys want to move this um, ribbon to the other side, that's okay too. Just, you know, kind of work with what works for you. Play with it a little bit. Um, excuse me. So I think I kind of like that placement for my cups and my kettle and everything like that. So I'm going to add, go ahead and grab some little dimensionals here. And I'm going to put it on the back of everything. And I'm going to give this lots of dimension. I'm not going to skimp on the dimensionals, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put all the dimensionals on. I'll be right back. Okay, as you guys can see, I have all the dimensional pieces on the back of all my individual pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove all the backs. I always set the back piece up first, or my largest piece, depending on how it works. And yes, I did actually have a dimensional in the spout as well as the teapot lid. Uh, I'm then going to place my second piece here over here. All right, so now I'm going to be making the bow that you guys see here. I want a nice, big full bow and I gotta be honest with you this might take me a few seconds so if I cut out and cut back in don't be surprised all right okay everybody surprisingly enough I actually got that off the first time or the first try so way to go me um doesn't normally happen for me so woohoo to that <laughs> sweet um around that Again, I'm not actually worried about covering some stuff up. I'm okay covering a few things up, just to let you guys know. Um, you can always tuck your tail under there, and yeah. So that's kind of where I want to keep it. That's where I want to put that. Before I want to do that, though, I want to grab my white twine back out here and cut myself off a little bit. And I'm actually going to tie a knot around the center and I'm actually going to add this little metal fleur-de-lis that I have and I think I got this out of jo like a Joanne's dollar bin or something like that so um, just to let everybody know <laughs> so the original one just had the big bow and the little bow. This one's going to have the two bows as well as the charm. It just gives a little something extra in my opinion. I'm going to trim my bow edges just a little bit. Now you're going to ask, how are you going to put this on? I'm going to use glue dots. It's a lot easier, a lot faster. And I think I'm going to use about three, possibly four because it's a little bit on the heavy side. So just grab your glue dot. There we go. So already we have the metal aspect going on here. We have the extra background going on here, but we still have a lot of the elements of the first original card. All right, so another notch up that I'm gonna take this on is I had some of these like little papery flowers right here. Um, I went ahead and cut off three of them. I also have these blue ones, but I thought the red ones just made it pop a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna cut off the tail. And even on top of that, I actually have some glitter glue here. And I'm not sure, is it better to dip or is it better to paint? So this is Bow Bunny's glitter paste. And I think we're actually going to attach and then use like a little tiny paintbrush to do this. So again, with my glue dots, because I love myself some glue dots. I'm just going to place my flowers this was not in the original version, just to let you guys know, my inspiration version, version, <laughs> sorry, version. Um, but I really like the flowers. I gave it a little bit of a pop. And again, it was a little more upscale than before. And again, it's just a little something extra. It's a little something more to the card. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a paintbrush and some of my glitter paste. 
and just dab this paste, and yes, it is paste, by the way. It does dry clear around the edges of my flowers here. It's by Bow Bunny. I believe I purchased it from photobella.com. It's not something that's new. It's been around for a while. It's been reconstituted a couple of times, to be honest. I got in there. The nice thing about this paste is that if you put too much on, you can kind of wipe some of it off if you want to. But it just gives it a little something. Pam, pow. What? So again, it's just a little extra step there. And to finish off my card, so... Again, the difference between, actually, sorry. And to finish off my card, I have over here some Stampin' Up! Pearls. This also was not part of the original um, example that she gave me, but I kind of liked it. So uh, I grabbed a bigger pearl here, and it seems to fit in the top of this little thing right here, the top of the teapot right there, really, really well. And I'm going to grab, so... You guys can count here. There's like five pearls that are all put together. I'm going to grab two rows of, oh, excuse me, two rows of five. So there we go. All right. So there it is. So this is my card taken up a notch. And again, it is an original inspiration from one that I saw done by Rebecca Diedrup. Again, in the description box below, guys. Uh, so... This is our original card. It is a four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is a five by seven version of the same thing, which is really beautiful. Uh, this was the original one I did for a class based off of her original picture I saw on Pinterest. And this is one that um, is a step up from this one here with some of the elements that Rebecca put in hers, plus a little few extras that I put in there. So this is Mel from Cardstock Concoction saying thank you guys so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.